narration and editing by Seven Ray D. Script by the Cheney. Resident Evil 2 Noir. There were books on the shelves that didn't make any sense, topographical maps, geological surveys, and blueprints I did not recognize. If only I could tell my ten-year-old self that the rumors were true, a hidden office, but why? What was the point? Between the growls and snarls, I could have sworn I heard a man begging for help, begging to be killed. <laughs> they never tell you in the police academy how often you run into horribly mutated scientists. There is nothing like hands-on experience. All I had was a knife. Jesus. The instinct to survive took over, and I began to swipe and slash with Marvin's knife. Each wing opened the creature, unfolded the strange purple tissue of its arm, and then. I saw the eye. I had a target. It felt the dark, but I knew it wasn't gone for good. The thing had been a man once, and to this day, I still feel that it had been fighting against itself. Whatever remained of who he had been was trying to stop himself. Such a fate would be the closest thing to hell one would find on Earth. The generator room's layout did not make very much sense. I did not have to be a civil engineer to see that the police station wasn't the only thing being fed by the generators. I would find my answers, and so much more, past the catwalk. The parking garage was deserted and the gate was closed. There had been a fight here, maybe a day or two before. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Need a key card. I smelt the dog before I saw it. Rot and exposed tissue. Cataracted eyes. You gotta be kidding me. And then it was upon me. I reached for my gun. Just snapping close to my face. The baby stinks its breath and drool. And then. 
she was there. Who is that? Stay sharp. Lower it. FBI. Sorry. Thank you. For your help. Surprised you made it this far. FBI, huh? What's going on here? Sorry, that information's classified. Where are you going? Do yourself a favor. Stop asking questions and get the hell out of here. It's funny how much trust we built in things like badges and fancy ID cards. Hey! I'm not done talking to you! If the FBI knew, that meant someone on the outside knew. It meant that there was somewhere to go and a force of justice on the other side that would make it right. The woman though, she was slick as an oil spill and about as toxic. The zombies in the cells told the story of the last few days, but it still raised questions. How many of them had been human when they went in? Were they already gone? Did it really matter? The mind tried to make sense, even of the most insane circumstances. Hello? Hey. I don't believe it. A real human. <laughs> Hello, human. You've been here long? Long enough. Are we the last ones alive? No. No, there's a few of us. Huh. That's good news, I guess. Yeah. That's of course Irons sent you. Irons? You mean Chief Irons? Is he still around? Who cares? Hopefully he's somebody's dinner by now. What do you mean by that? He's the bastard that locked me in here. I'm sure he had a good reason. He did. I was about to blow the whistle on his dirty ass. Reporters have their own moral code and an innate distrust of authority. Historically, not the best combination. I did the same thing to him, I guess. Hey, I'll make you a deal. Unlock this cell and I'll give you this. There's no other way out of that parking garage. Believe me. Sorry, I can't do that. I have to talk to the chief first. Who do you trust? Look, we're both prisoners in this station. So either we play nice and help each other out. Or... Shit. It's coming. What? What's coming? Come on. Come on, don't be an asshole. Hey, you need this. Just get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> Certainly not the best way to get ahead in life. Oh my god. Nobody said a goddamn thing about disembodied head crushing hands. Who is that? It's just me. So you can put that thing away. I don't even know what happened. It just happened so quick. I told you to get out of here. You wouldn't want to end up like Ben, would you? You knew him? He was an informant. Had information of use to my investigation. So what he said was true? Hey, you can't keep walking away from me! I don't even know your name. I'm Leon Kennedy. Find a way out, Leon. Before it's too late. Then we'll talk. Name's Ada. Well, I guess the deal's on. I was thinking back to the first time my guidance counselor told me that I should consider a career in law enforcement. Reading any and all of the pamphlets and literature Pebble in a pond of shit. And these were the ripples. Shit ripples. <laughs> the 
These poor animals didn't deserve this. And if I had more ammunition, I would have put them out of their misery then and there. I had glimpsed a report in the holding cells. The location of electronic components required to open the door to get the keycard. The station tour two weeks before was fresh enough in my mind to tell me where. But there was a lot of distance between me and the components I needed. Like the humans, their movements were erratic, but it was their ferocity that allowed me to escape, I think. I could hear the shuffling of their feet behind me, and all but feel their teeth sinking in. I escaped one horror, only to move on to another. I knew going back to the RPD was a bad idea, but in absence of any good ones, I pushed ahead. To say I was nervous would have been a vast understatement. The officer who did not make it, Elliot, had been in this hallway before, as was whatever had torn him in half. He looked surprised to see me. I almost asked him if he was okay as he looked up. Almost. The police station filled with monsters, and somewhere Claire was there too. Aneda, the fed in a long boat, a natural born spy, she danced through my thoughts and her voice stood out against the horrors of police station. I still hear it sometimes. I'm starting to think my luck was picking up. Elliot's notebook had the position of a key at the bottom. It was a rare bit of good luck that I could put out the fire and maybe, if I got even luckier, squeeze past the helicopter. Nothing worth doing, it's so very easy. Getting better at avoiding them. They were fast and slow at irregular intervals. Faking them out was easy. The monster had no sense of anticipation or irony, no problem solving skills, and only blind hunger to drive them. The breeze and the rain was cool and refreshing. I felt the first pangs of hope building my stomach. There was nothing I wasn't prepared for between me and the bell tower. Water drowned out the flames. Acrid, sharp smell of a burning fuel was heavy on the air still, overpowering the ambient odor of a rotting flesh that had overtaken the whole city. Things were looking. Ah. Just... Jesus Christ! Son of a bitch.